huge market up here in Boston, man. No, bro, you know, you know what, dude? And I appreciate you saying that, and thanks for keeping the dream alive, but I didn't turn my back on Vince. What you need to no, real- no, I, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people out there online and everywhere else yeah. you did, and you know the real fans of yours and the real fans of wrestling know that didn't happen. So I want you to know that we don't think that the true fans don't think that. We appreciate what you're doing, man. But you know what? A lot of people don't realize is that Vince is business, and he wants to keep moving and keep moving, and he doesn't ride a horse till it drops, and then pick it up and ride it again. He rides a horse till it drops. He shoots it, then he eats it, <laughs> and, and and that didn't happen with Hulkamania, and, and you guys proved that to Vince in WrestleMania 18, because when I was postured as the worst bad guy in the world, and The Rock was getting his break, and he was doing the Scorpion King, and he was smelling what The Rock was cooking every week, and he was the big push, you guys, the fans, showed Vince McMahon and the whole wrestling world that you can't tell you who to cheer for, who to hate, or, or to take this contrived program. And you guys made a stance and said, you know what, we're Hogan fans, the guy's been through a lot of stuff. He's he's been out there thirty years trying to keep, you know, kicking. And, and you guys expressed what was real. And so, you know, I just wanted to let everybody know, just like you know, that this is just business, like Vince said. You know, just this is business. That's all it is, brother. And thank you so much for for hanging in there. No, thank you, man. I appreciate it for everything you've done. What you're going to be doing. Thanks thank a lot, you, brother. We got another email here, Jamie in Chicago. I read your book. And you got into it a little, but if you can tell me how you feel about your life now, are you disappointed with any actions of Nick or Brooke? Well, let me take the second part of that question. It's the actions of Nick or Brooke, I'm not disappointed at all. Once you, once you get to know my kids, Nick and Brooke, there's not a bad bone in their body. Nick is just so dialed in. He's so positive, you know. Brooke is so dialed in. He's, he, she's so positive. I don't want to Bible thump you to death, but they walk in the spirit of Christ. They're real, real positive people. And, uh, you know, as far as my life goes, I survived. And, and that's one of the things, Jamie, that I wanted everybody to know, that times are tough. You know, people are losing their jobs. You know, homes are going up, uh, you know, being foreclosed. You know, Obama came in, and a lot of things aren't happening like we thought they would happen. And what I found out, you know, you've got to survive the lows and ride the highs. You know, and, and I had two tough years. I lost everything. I financially, you know, lost everything over the last couple of years. You know, my family totally got pulled apart. You know, I actually sat in my house when I totally bottomed out, Jamie. When I went home and all the, the house was empty, there were no clothes in the closet, the dogs were gone. I actually sat, you know, in my bathroom, you know, drinking a bottle of rum, eating Xanaxes, and I put a gun to my head for two days, brother, and I survived that. And I decided I had to make a choice, to live or die, to be happy or sad, to be in a good mood or a bad mood. I snapped out of it. Layla Ali called me. She kept saying, I love you. You know, we miss you. You left American Gladiators. We've never seen anybody so depressed. We're so worried about you. We haven't heard from you. I had Bubba call me. I bullshit a Bubba on the phone. Oh, yeah, everything's cool. You know, everything's cool. I had uh, Steve Chapman call me, a buddy of mine. I bullshitted him. Oh, yeah, everything's cool. But they knew stuff was going on. And uh, it was a situation that, out of nowhere, somebody that I really didn't know very well, a girl that I worked with, Muhammad Ali's daughter, Layla, called me. She goes, we miss you. We love you. I snapped out of it. I couldn't get out of the house fast enough, and that's what my life is about now. You know, I met uh, Jennifer, you know, in a health food store, and uh, it was a situation. From that point on, everything got better. Everything started, you know, everything's cool. You, and you know what? And I'm never, and you can ask Bub or anybody that knows me, I'm not all about the money. I'm all about moving forward and stuff. So my life now, if I had to put a word on it, it's perfect. Because any legal stuff, any crazy stuff that's going on, that's a life situation. That's not my life anymore. So things are going really good, and, and thank you for asking. We've got Tom in Orlando. How much did steroids play a role in your career? Who was the biggest roid freak back in the day? Oh, man, here we go again. All right, steroids, brother. I got my pump on. I got the jump on everybody else, dude. Um, the steroids were huge. You know, it was a situation that when you wrestle 300, sometimes 400 times in a year, twice on Wednesday, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday, you get hurt. You tear muscles. You get beat up. You get bruised. You land on your tailbone. You hyperextend your elbow. You smash your wrist. Things swell up. Steroids were legal. You know, it was a huge part in the career. I mean, even if you didn't work out every day and you missed two or three days in a row, you still didn't lose your swell. It was part of the industry. It was part of the business. 
It ran rampant in baseball. It ran rampant in football. It ran rampant in hockey. And at the end of the day, I was branded at the steroid trial as the one, actually, actually Dr. Zaharian, the doctor that got indicted, he said, Hulk Hogan was the worst user I've ever seen. I mean, it was totally ridiculous. I just bumped along nice and easy. I've always been around 300 pounds. I didn't have to go to some of the extremes, you know, that some of the guys went to. You know, when superstar Billy Graham was running hard, you know, that's when the time where the guys were just running rampant because the mindset was steroids were just as safe as sugar, you know. So everybody's been re-educated. Everybody realizes that, you know, right now what these things will do to you if they're misused right now, you know, in competitions like baseball, football, hockey, all these competitive sports, the Olympics, you know, the judges, the people that run the teams, the ju- the people that run the uh, like the NFL, they need to make a decision what they're going to do about it and how strict they're going to be. But uh, thank God everybody survived it. Thank God everybody uh, basically has been reeducated. And you guys just got to understand, there's nothing you can't ask me. There's not a single question that you guys can't ask me on Hulk Hogan Uncensored that I won't answer. I mean, I'm wide open, guys. So, you know, I'm trying to be straight up. I'm not real good with the radio. This is my first day on the job. You know, I don't even know what I sound like. I just hope you guys hang with me. But please call 1-8869-BUBBA. And i got to throw out much respect for Bubba for paving the road. Howard Stern taught me a lesson of a lifetime. He had me jitterbugging, had me scared to death every time I went in there. He kept me on the edge of my seat. He made me realize that it's okay to ask and answer any questions. So that's the form he gave me. Hulk Hogan Uncensored, please call. All right, Jason, St. Augustine, what up, brother? Hey, Hulkster, how you doing? Well, good, brother. How are you? Oh, uh, pretty good. Long time fan, uh, long time fan since WrestleMania two. There. No doubt, no doubt. What's on your mind, brother? Got a question. I was on uh, Fox News the other day, and I found uh, a little tidbit or a snippet that they were showing all the uh, wrestling stars that had passed over the years. And uh, I had seen that Miss Elizabeth had passed away, and I didn't even know that. Yeah, brother, she sure did. Can you tell us what she was like back then in the days when, you know, you were with Savage? And, I mean, was she as sweet as she could be? Well, you know, she was under a lot of pressure, you know, because Mach was real, real, real intense. You know, he loved this woman more than life. I mean, you could just see it in his eyes. I mean, she was his life, and he was, you know, the wrestling business is real edgy, uh, edgy. It's real dangerous. And back in the day, especially, you know, during the 80s with all the crazy stuff and the drugs and the party, and Macho was real, real intent on protecting her. So she was under a lot of pressure because of that and because of the, the performance standards that we, we had her doing. I mean, we would, I would move outside and Randy would fly through the ropes and knock her on our back. I mean, we did so much crazy stuff back in the day that, you know, I have to rate her right up there. And I'm not going to say she's better than scary Sherry Martell. But she was right up there at the top of the ladder with great managers. Now, if you're talking about box office, she was right up there, number one. Her and Jimmy Hart were number one box office because Jimmy was right always on his game. He was always with the biggest stars. And Elizabeth ran neck and neck with him, brother. I hear you. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, what do you think of Eric and Midget there? I mean, he's prick, isn't he? Yeah, brother, he's a little stiff, you know. He, you know, he, he's just uh, every dog has his day, brother. Eric's gonna, Eric's gonna meet his own, meet his own doom here pretty soon, brother. Thank you, bro. You know, guys, everybody keeps asking me about um, tough situations for me. You know, I said I really couldn't be stumped by any question here on Hulk Hogan Uncensored, but you know, the one thing that every time you guys talk to me about it, it just drops me, and and, and it takes me off my game. Is you know, when you talk about. Uh, all the wrestlers that have died, you know, and and I just had a list, you know, handed to me. And there's over a hundred names. There's over a hundred names, you know, of wrestlers that uh, have passed away. And, you know, as I look at the names, it, it's just sad. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing on, you know, how many accidents happened, on how many guys couldn't make the transition between the limelight and the money and the 